In this video, I will show you how you can programmatically extract information out of web pages. For instance, many Wikipedia pages have tables like this one. They can be useful for data analytics. Today, I will show you how we can automatically convert this table to a Python dictionary. As a first step, we need to understand the language of web pages, which is HTML or the hypertext markup language. Any website is written as an HTML source file. Our web browser renders that source file and displays the result. And what we see in the browser is the rendered result. We can ask the browser to show us the underlying HTML source code by right-clicking to website and pressing the button View Page Source. Here on the right, you have the source code for the web page on the left. The most important property of HTML are tags. A tag is written with a sharp open bracket followed by the tag name, in this case h2, followed by a sharp open bracket to close the tag. All the purple color text in the source code are HTML tags, and each of the tags have a special meaning in HTML. For instance, the h2 tag defines a second level heading in HTML. After the tag is opened, the text of the heading follows, and then the tag is closed again, indicates that this is the ending of the header. The rendered result by the browser can be seen here on the left. The browser automatically chose a larger font size than the rest of the page in order to highlight that this is a header. Other examples of tags in HTML is the UL tag for defining an unordered list and the LI tag for defining a list item. HTML has many more tags, for instance, to display pictures, to define links to other web pages, and so on. Another key property of HTML is that the text can be nested. This UL tag is opened in line 7 and closed in line 11. And it contains three other LI tags inside it. But you can also see that this unordered list is itself contained in a body tag, which is opened in line 3 and closed in line 21. And even more, the body tag is in is contained in an HTML tag, which is opened in line 2 and closed in line 22. The last property that we need to know about HTML is that tags can also have attributes. The unordered list tag has an attribute with the name ID and the value unordered list and a second attribute called style with a color definition value. This is all we need to know for now about HTML. Before we start extracting tables from Wikipedia pages, we will start by extracting these three items from our simple HTML page using Python. You need to install the required dependencies. If you have a conda environment, you can simply use the conda command to install the dependencies. In our case, it is BS4, which is the beautiful soup package to extract data from HTML pages. We also install the LXML parser which is used by Beautiful Soup. And finally, the requests package allows us to download websites. The first thing that we need to do is to import Beautiful Soup. Next, we need to load the HTML source file. For our first example, I have stored the HTML file on disk, so we can simply use the open command. The source variable now contains the, H the same HTML code that is shown on the right-hand side of the screen. The next step is to instantiate Beautiful Soup. The HTML source is an argument. Also, we tell Beautiful Soup to use the LXML parser, which is faster than the default parser that Beautiful Soup comes with. The return variable, here called document, will allow us now to quickly access different tag names and contents from our HTML document. We can always print a Beautiful Soup object and see the underlying HTML source code. At this stage, the Beautiful Source document is equivalent to the source code on the right-hand side of the screen. Beautiful Soup provides the find method to find specific tags in the document. In our example, we were interested in all the items in the unordered list, which is defined by the UL tag. So we call the find method with the UL argument. When we now display the, the return content, we can see that Beautiful Soup extracted all tags that are contained in the first unordered list. In other words, this HTML code is equivalent to this HTML code on the right-hand side. The next step is to extract all the items within the unordered list. Beautiful Soup 
provides the find all method, which returns all tags that match the provided name. So we call the find all method on our ulist variable and filter all items and filter all LLI tags, which corresponds to items in the list. The return value is now a Python list containing each list item as one entry in the Python list. As the final step, we loop over all the items in our item list and call the getText method to extract the content of that item. And as you can see, we have successfully extracted the three items contained in our web page. One comment here, the find all method, the find all method works recursively by default. If we are interested in any list items in our document, no matter how deeply nested these list items might be, we can simply call document.findAll. This will return the items of both the unordered and the ordered list contained in the document. For larger HTML code, it can be sometimes difficult to find the relevant content by purely searching for specific tag names. For this reason, Beautiful Soup also allows you to search for specific attribute names and values. For instance, if we're interested in the tag name that has an ID attribute with the value unordered list, we can use the find command shown on the left where we specify the attributes argument with the desired attribute name and the desired attribute value. Again, as you can see, the find method works recursively by default and will identify the first occurrence that matches the required tag attributes. Once you have obtained a tag with beautiful soup, you can also request which attributes it has by accessing the attributes property. The values of the attributes can be accessed by using the dictionary notation in Python. So for instance, this code example extract, extracts the value of the style at attribute. So now let's move on to our full task, extracting a table from Wikipedia. First, we import the required modules. We use the request module to download the HTML source code. Of course, we import beautiful soup. We also import the regular expression module as we will need regular expressions later on and also the date util package, which we will use later on to pass dates. The first step is to get the source code of our web page. The request.get method automatically downloads the HTML source code for a given URL. The results variable contains both the content of the website, but it also contains a status code to indicate if downloading the web page was successful or not. If the web page was successfully downloaded, the status code should be set to 200. It is good practice at this point to add an assert statement to check that the status code has the correct value. The, the actual HTML source code can be accessed through the content property. With that, we can pass the source code to the beautiful soup class. Before we can start extracting information from our table, we need to figure out which tag we should be looking for. To do so, we can right click on the content that we would like to extract and press the inspect button. This will open a code editor in our web browser and by hovering over the different parts in the source code, the relevant sections in the web page are automatically hided as well. The table that we would like to extract uses the table tag. Now we can go back to our Python source code and call the find method with the tag name table. Once we execute this command, the table variable contains the table tag and all the subtags that are contained in the table. By looking at the first lines, we observe that the first lines contain the header names rank, country, population, just like the headings that we also see in the table of interest. This is important to check because there could be another table that Beautiful Soup finds instead. Again, it is useful to automatically check that Beautiful Soup identifies the right table. To do so, we can use an assert statement where we use the find statement to extract the first header of the table, get its underlying title and check that that title is equivalent to rank, since this is also the first column title in our target table. In HTML tables, each row uses the tr tag. So we can use the find all method on our table variable to extract all the tr tags using beautiful soup. This will return a Python list where each list item corresponds to one row 
in our target list. Now we can use the standard Python loop to loop over all the rows. Note that I skipped the first and the last row. The first row only contains the headers, which we are not interested in. Also, if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the table, you see that the last row also contains some summary information that we do not want to extract either. Inside our for loop, we use the find all method to extract either any TD or TH tag. Both these tags are used to identify cells in a table. As a next step, I can extract the text that, it con that is contained in each cell. I call the variable cells text and I use a list, list comprehension to call the get text method on each cell in our cells list. Now let's print out the cells text and look at, let's look at the results. Looking at the first row, we observe that we successfully extracted the right information. China is the country with the highest population with roughly 1.4 billion inhabitants. However, our strings have some unwanted new lines and other characters that we are not interested in. Luckily, the getText method has a strip argument that automatically removes these unwanted characters. Once we run the extraction again, now all the unwanted characters are gone. The final step in our extraction is to convert the extracted strings into more Python-friendly data structures. For instance, the population size is better represented as an integer and the date should be represented by Python date object. As a first step, I create variables that contains the values of each cell in our row. That is the rank, the country, the population, the percentage, when it was updated and the source. The order of these variables corresponds to the order of the column in our table. The first variable that we want to convert is the population size. Before we can convert that string into, a, into an integer, we need to remove the comma symbols. I use a regular expression with a subfunction to replace the comma symbol with an empty string. After that, we can convert the resulting string into an integer. The next cell entry that requires cleaning up is the country cell. You can see from the table on the right that the country names often have suffixes like B in China, C in India, D in the United States, and so on. In order to remove these, I use a regular expression to extract the substring that only contains of word characters, white space characters, brackets, or a dot. In particular, I do not allow the square brackets that I use to identify the suffixes. The next value to clean up is the percentage value. A natural data tape in Python for that is a floating point value. In order to convert that, we need to remove the percentage sign. I again use the regular expression and the find all method to extract the substring that only contains of digit characters and dot characters. After that, I can use the float function to convert the string into a pointing floating point value. Finally, we would like to convert the date string into a Python date object. To do so, I use the pass function that comes with the date util module. The pass function automatically detects various date formats and converts it into a Python object. At this point, we are done with our conversion and we can simply print out the results. Comparing the results from the left and right, we can see that we have successfully extracted the Wikipedia table into Python objects. A natural next step would be to store these values as a Python list or dictionary and to perform an analysis on them. This is everything I wanted to teach you about beautiful soup and web scraping and I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye bye!